Uh, you guys got a pretty seemingly high profile addition in Doug this mm -hmm. offseason. Looks like a guy who, who can play. Uh, what's your breakdown of working with him and what he can bring to the team? Eager. Wants to play, wants to get in and contribute, wants to help the team win. Um, I mean, he's hard on himself um, and he's detailed. He's picked up this offense really quick. Um, that's hard to do. That's not, this is not an easy offense, verbiage wise, um, rep wise, to get in and just jump in. And, you know, you tell him once and, and he's able to go out there and express the route and express the block and, and put himself in a position to make plays. So he's having a good, you know, camp right now for a guy that's just only had seven practices. Where do you think that ability to pick things up that quickly comes from? Um, this kid, I mean, I still remember recruiting him way back when, when I was in other, other spots. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, coming from American Heritage, I mean, he's, he's one of those kids that's just tough, wants, loves football. Uh, once he get it, you know, he's going to run aggressive, run angry. Um, so um, he's a football player. I mean, he likes football. What does the evaluation process for him look like then? Obviously, you didn't play a ton of Minnesota, no. but if you knew him from high school, like yeah. how, how does that work? Well, I mean, it just makes it a lot easier because I can already, I mean, I can call his high school coaches. I've already talked to some of them. So I, I got an idea of a feel. Um, but like I said, I already knew what his film, highlight film, mm -hmm. high school film looked like. So uh, I felt really comfortable being able to talk to him, knowing what type of personality he would have coming in. Um, you know, we did our homework and, and, and like I said, he's showing that he can do what we need him to get done. And from Tanaka Scott, what have you seen from him? He's just a big, physical, imposing guy, and he's getting better, growing. His football IQ is growing. He's making more plays. You know, he's always played aggressive. When he starts to really use that body and, and start to play basketball to some extent on the football field with it, uh, he's going to continue to grow and should continue to get better and should make some plays. Yeah. How has he developed since you got here? Oh, shoot. To put a percentage on it, <laughs> it's, it's a big percentage. Uh, he's, he's really – he's wanted to get better. Um, from where he was in the spring, um, I mean, stumbling through it, you know, newborn calf type of deal, and now he's, I mean, he's running, he's, he, I won't say thoroughbred, but he's out there running around and, and putting himself in a position to make plays consistently. That's what you want out of guys that come out of the spring, um, come back, you know, in the camp with some, some confidence, you know, definitive in their answers and, and how they want to make plays, how they want to position themselves to make plays, and he's doing that now. So. Sometimes now it's just kind of like, all right, I'm gonna take the reins off of it and let you run wild a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he's not there yet. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the physicality part at the start. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you think about speed with him, I think at the high school level at least, like what do you feel like he brings to the wide receiver room? Well, I mean, he's physical, he's imposing, and, and he, he's aware of that. You know, uh, I don't have a problem with Tanaka saying that, you know, he wants to go and get in somebody's face and be physical and, and physically dominate. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have guys like that in your room, you don't want to squash it. You want it to. You want to make sure that it does it the right. You know, at the right time. You know, don't cause us penalties and things of that nature. But you want that to just make it efficient at how he attacks the corner. And he's starting to get more efficient in how he attacks the corner. Is, it, is there an obvious concern, or I don't want to call it weakness necessarily, but something you, you, you're worried about at this point with your room and your position? I mean, we're just young. Yeah. You know, I've experienced this. In 2012, I had a you know a lot of issues to deal with a bunch of young wide receiver squads. So um, I think I'm uh, experienced in trying to make sure that those guys understand, stay focused, execute the details, follow through, but be hungry to make your make the play. You know, so I just got to get them, the more and more they get comfortable making the plays, understanding the situation, and just play within our offense, they'll be fine, they'll grow. But right now I got to learn, you know, like I said, sometimes you don't want to, Jump them too hard when they're, and I'm trying to build up the confidence. Mm -hmm. So, but there's other times when I'm going to need to get on them, you know, because I want them to understand the, you know, severity of, of a drop. You know, okay. so um, you got to make them a fine, a fine line between the two, and then, you know, like I said, but build them up in, the, in on the back end. A month is 30, 31 days, no matter how you look at it, right? There's, right. Is, are build there ways up. you can expedite and? and speed up their experience and, and their growth, uh, even though the, the time stays the same? It's reps. Okay. Still reps, reps and experience. I gotta be put in a situation, my body awareness. I gotta be in a situation, I gotta understand that this is what's gonna happen at this time and then I need to act accordingly. The more times that they're put in those rep situations and then I get the results that I want. And you know, like I said, the more we put Tanaka in more of those situations, more of those, these young guys, Doug, keep them in those situations, then 
then they'll make the decisions we need them to make and they'll make the plays we need them to make. But not before, to just expect a guy to just come right in without experience to be able to do these things, you wish him. What have you seen from Lawrence so far? Uh, he's, he's green and growing. I mean, that, you know, he's still physical. He's going up and catching the ball with his hands. His confidence is going. You know, like I said, I mean, you guys probably saw, you know, where they were last year. You know, I didn't get a chance to see that. But their confidence now, they know how to line up. They know they're attacking DBs now. They're attacking the secondary now. Um, that's what he's doing. That's what look, looks good. He's playing bigger, playing stronger, you know, and playing faster from day one because he had last year and what he had to deal with last year, he's playing stronger, playing more confident now. Do you, as, what's your takeaway from him thinking about leaving the program for this year? I think his, the, the guys he came in with and the guys he went to war with, you know, and he started to build those bonds, those things become more important to him than a lot of the peripheral things. So, you know, kudos to him and, and being, you know, bonded with the, these guys that he's been in these walls with. And maybe not specific to Lawrence, but when you mentioned peripheral things, mm -hmm. what, what is that nowadays in your mind for coaches? Uh, there's, there's just so much things that these kids got to deal with. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it's stuff all over the place. You know, way more than what I had to deal with in 90 when I was playing, you know, because mm -hmm. we didn't have the internet. You know, it was dinosaurs, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I was born in rubber or whatever, however you want to mm -hmm. consider it. But, you know, these guys, um, there's just so many things that these guys got to deal with. They're being tugged in a lot of different directions. And it's just nice to see a guy say, you know what, these are my guys, these are who I want to play with, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ball out with these guys. That's simple. For you and the whole position group, has there been a point of emphasis for you guys during fall camp? Um, well, stay humble, stay hungry. Stay humble, stay hungry. You know, it'll come. If we stay humble, we stay hungry, everything we want to come to us. You know, if we don't, if we put the cart before the, uh, the horse or things of that nature, then things are not going to go as smooth as we want. And, and guys that get their mentality, you know, bent out of shape. Stay humble, stay hungry. The opportunities will come. we got to make sure we make them. It sounds like you knew what you were dealing with when you, when you saw this youth. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's obviously nothing new to you. But has there been a surprise with this group to you? I know it's still early. Their willingness to work, you know. Um, you know, I said that when I first got here. One of the first things they told me, hey, Coach, you don't have to tell us to go in there and give you effort. That's what the group told me. And I was like, okay. All right. That was way different than what I had in 2012 when that thing happened. And, there, you know, and, and I had to build guys up more because they were split all over the place. Yeah. All right. But this group, I mean, like I said, I think they'll be able to, when things get a little crazy, I think this group will come together. They'll talk it out. Then they'll get refocused. And then they'll... They'll do it faster, but you know that's just you know that's me if and wishing too, staying positive. But um, we gotta stay positive with my guys. They're young, and um, like I said, no matter what, I'm gonna keep trying to put my arm around them, bring them over the house, shove some pizza down their throat, and then uh, you know, like I say, make them feel better about themselves. You said they told you that as a group. Was there an elected <laughs> spokesperson? Did one guy say it, or did they all say it? Well, several, from from Luke to to LJ. You know, I mean, they all you know from. Skinner, I mean, they all said effort is very important to them, and they're going to they gonna give that part of it. They want to make sure that when that ball hits the suburbs, that somebody's blocking, somebody's doing the right things, and I always say the suburbs. I mean, the wide receivers in the suburbs. Inner city, we don't mess with the inner city. So, um, you know, we just try to make sure that we do the best we can to make sure that the ball gets to the end zone. You mentioned back in the spring you like coaching guys who have a chip on their shoulder. Yes. Do you feel like these guys do? Oh, yeah. Well, I feel like this entire team does. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see that, when you see guys that understand that I may have not been recruited highly, and, um, I'm in a situation where I'm trying to earn playing time. They're hungry. They want to win. Chile. Like I said, I've had a lot of success with guys that have that look in their eyes. So I'm, I do see these guys having that same mentality. How can you channel that? Tell them to go get the damn ball. <laughs> You don't want to. You don't want to make this complicated. Games isn't complicated. You know, if you go into it with a mentality of, you know, don't be passive. You know, try to keep the game as simple as you possibly can, so you can play aggressive. The wide receiver game is not about being overly, overly complicated. It's about playing fast and then attacking the ball or attacking the defender in regards to a blocking situation. So, you know, as long as I can simplify it, make them to where they can just attack and be natural and go and flow, then things are going to be good. It's going to be real good. 
Tori's someone, Tori Lachlan's someone who's been very versatile mm -hmm. talent for this team. I know you were just here this year, you didn't see yeah. him last year, but, and he's with the running backs, but do you see that at all? Oh, that ball skills, I mean, change of direction. I mean, he's got it. I mean, I don't get to put my hands on him, you know, uh, yeah. but, you know, I know that, you know, at, at a moment's notice, I know he's got the ability to come out there and help. So, um, the kid is athletic, and um, you need athletic guys that have chips on their shoulders. And, and I, I perceive him to be one of those guys that have a chip on the shoulder as well. Have you thought about going to Jonathan and being like, hey, can I just have him for the day? No, no, no. I want to make sure my guys, you know, the ones that got in the room first, you know, you, you know, you always keep the genie in a bottle, and then, you know, you get to make a wish when you pull it out. What has Luke brought to the group? Kind of in your time here, uh, he means he's the leader. I mean, he understands the situation. He's he's played in games. I mean, he's um, he has that. Um, like I said, when you talk about having a chip on his shoulder, I mean, he's got a chip on his shoulder. You know, I think he really, really wants to show that he can play at an elite level. Um, whether or not I believe he can, whether or not you guys believe he can, as long as he keep believing that that's his level that he wants to achieve, then I'm gonna keep pushing it out there and and making him believe it until he gets what he wants out of this opportunity. Um, that's what the coach is supposed to do. So he's, uh, he's moving in the right direction, and, and there's a lot of trust there right now for him. Hey, Jarrett, with the, with the loss of Kwame, mm -hmm. how important is it for there to be the guy, like a guy that the quarterback looks to? Uh, I mean, I've been in several situations where, you know, it's, I mean, you can do it by committee. Um, you just have to have guys that are hungry to go make a play. You know, and if, in, if and when you're in an offense that's simple enough that these guys can just react and go get it, you can do it by committee, all right? You can get, take a guy that has special skill sets to do certain things and, and use those things. But when you don't, you know, when there's not that situation, then that's when it really becomes a guy that's, you know, Kwame, you know, shoot, I mean, he, he did just about everything from what I see on film, you know, and it looks like all the other guys were just green and growing and coming up. Um, so I just think, you know, for, for me right now, every kid is a potential playmaker. You want to push them in that regard. Um, because if they all feel that way, and they all feeling good that way, when the ball, the only thing I worry about is when that ball is in the air, do they attack it? You know, do they deal with the DB? Do they attack the ball? Hey, that's, and then we look at the percentage-wise of how many plays you make and how many plays you don't make. The guys that are making the most plays, percentage-wise high, those guys are, make, are going to get more opportunities. And as long as guys understand that in the meeting room, we're going to play the guys that uh, when that percentage is high as far as making plays, 50-50 balls and whatever the little things, and they're doing those things, those guys are going to play. And I'm, I think we'll have a lot of guys that are willing to do whatever it takes to get that percentage high making plays. You mentioned that there. Is there a set number of guys you feel good about in that regard right now? Yeah, everything right now. But let me ask me after the scrimmage. You know, uh, scrimmages tell me everything I need to know. Anything else for Coach?